Hi guys, welcome to Saltwater Saturday on Life of Gaz. This is where I aim to put a new sea fishing video on every Saturday at 5 p.m. Hi guys, welcome to Life of Gaz, and today I'm out on a blue mink. So hopefully uh, we're going to be into some decent fish. Now the target for me today is taupe, uh, but I'm quite happy to pick up anything out there. Well, if you've seen last week's video, you'll know what I'm using is bait. I'm using fresh mackerel, which was caught on this trip, and probably about an hour before this part of the session started. Now, I'm fishing on the blue mink, and uh, from the last video, lots of people have asked me actually where we went out to. Uh, as you can see, if you look at the horizon, it's really foggy out there, and it is really difficult to picture where you are. So I've got absolutely no idea, but that being said, uh, these are Andy's marks from the Blue Mink, so I wouldn't be giving them away anyway. Now, if you'd like to join uh, Andy on the Blue Mink, then make sure you follow the link below and um, in the description. That will take you to his Facebook page and you can find out all the information about these trips there. But we're starting off today with the first dogfish of the day. Now, the mackerel bait that I was using was also attracting a few more dogfish. I've got two more following, and these two came up on a mackerel flapper, with one dogfish on one side and one on the other, but neither one of them had taken the hook. So as I pulled them to go up over the rail, uh, the bait come free, and it released the dogfish nicely for me. Now, as I'm sure you guys can imagine, the uh, dogfish were out in force. And it is actually really surprising to see the size of the baits that these fish can take. Uh, we had one uh, dogfish today taking almost an entire mackerel. And uh, you'll see that one later on in the video. Now, when it comes to uh, catching the tote, uh, the dogfish has sort of dominated that spot to start with. But then as the tide uh, turned and became stronger, the dogfish moved off and then one or two taupe were picked up around the boat. And there was the first tote boated at £23. Not long after, another tote fell to the same rod, uh, weighing in at just shy of 50 That was an absolutely cracking fish. And then, about five minutes after that, I got my first chance to get into one. And it's the first time I've hooked up on a tote, and I will tell you guys that I'm an absolute novice at it. I don't ever go out tote fishing. It's my first time where I've managed to actually go out and fish for them and be successful at it. Now I say successful uh, because this one I made a very rookie mistake on. And uh, what I'd done with my setup, I'd uh, just fished a zip slider straight down to the trace. Now I fish with braid and braid is very strong, but abrasion tends to snap it quite quickly and unfortunately that's what happened here and uh, the, as the fish turned we reckon it just rolled up on the line and snapped it so unfortunately i lost that guy
On the next cast I've managed to pick up a very small tope. Now I thought it was dogfish to start with but it is a tope probably of about maybe three to four pound. And this one wasn't actually hooked, it just came up holding the bait. So I had a go at dropping the bait just down in front of it, which it then took. Unfortunately, uh, it took the wrong end and didn't get the hook end. So it stripped the bait and then swam back off to the deep. So I've still not managed my target just yet. Now I'll tell you about the change which I've made to my setup. I'm still essentially fishing the same setup, but I've got the addition now of a 50 pound rubbing leader, which I've tied onto the main line. Now this in turn is less abrasive, even though it's not quite as strong as my main line. And uh, should any tope roll up on it, it shouldn't snap. Now having said that, uh, the rest of my setup, I'm fishing a 6.0 hook on a tope trace. And then I've got a zip slider and you may see that I've got quite a lot of weight on there. And while I've got two weights as opposed to just one, was the flow was just a little bit too strong for the 14 ounce weights. So I just doubled up just to hold my bait in place. Then I learned my next lesson about tope first fishing and that is uh, to make my own traces not to go and buy them as uh, this trace had only been crimped through once and uh, therefore when I picked up another nice solid fish that took a little bit of line unfortunately almost straight away uh, the uh, line slipped through the crimp and um, therefore I lost the fish but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some own, uh, some of my own tape traces which will stop this happening. Then, finally, I achieved my target species. So, I'd actually managed to boat a tope. The trouble was, this one was probably only two to three pound, and uh, I know there's bigger ones down there. So I got this one back and carried on fishing. Now as this video goes on you'll see me adapt my technique for actually encouraging bites because the tote bites had actually um, started to go a little bit more gentle as the session went on especially up towards the end of this video. So what you'll see me do more often than not is letting that bait sit down on the bottom 
Now, if I've not felt a bite for about five minutes, what I'll do is I'll just move the bait just by lifting the weight off the bottom and then letting it sink back down to give the bait a little bit of movement, mimicking a dying fish. Now, also, should I get a little bit of an investigation bite, then you'll see me do the same. So as soon as I get that bite, rather than leaving that bait there, I'll just twitch it back towards me ever so slightly. And this seemed to work incredibly well, as most of the time when I did this, I managed to pick a fish up almost straight away after. So throughout the rest of this video, you'll probably see me doing this more and more. And that is me really sort of keying in to what the fish are doing, how they're feeding and what they're reacting to in this session. One of the things that I noticed as the day went on was if there were taupe about, nothing else was biting. And this is a bit similar to when I'm cod fishing in the winter, as in uh, I get a little run of whiting as a tide comes in. Then as the cod move in, the whiting move off. And this seemed to be the case with the dogfish and the taupe. As when the taupe were coming up, there weren't any dogfish coming up. Then all of a sudden it would go quiet on the taupe for a bit. And then it would, you'd follow with a few taupe picking up baits and maybe the odd one or two being boated around the boat. Then, after a little while of uh, going quiet on the dogfish, I picked up another fish. This one, I'm sure, like I say, was a tote, as uh, it was very, very strong. It was staying down. And also, it was a cat and mouse game of me retrieving line and then the tote taking line off. Now, this fish uh, put up a lovely spirited fight, and you'll see what happens when I bring it up to the boat. Now, although the fish had come up dragging a few rigs with it, that wasn't a problem uh, because they were sliding freely up and down the line and they were close enough to the tope that we could control it. And this fish come up and appeared to be beat and finished as it was uh, just relaxed up on the surface. But no sooner did I grab hold of the trace, unfortunately the tope shook his head and pulled the hook through. So unfortunately I lost this one and this one we estimated maybe close to about 20 pound. Just like I was saying earlier about uh, when the tape came on, they came on in numbers. Straight away, I put it back down and picked up another tope. Unfortunately, this wasn't a 20 pounder. This again was another small juvenile tope.
Throughout this session, I'd adapted and changed the presentation of the bait. Now, although the bait I was using was fresh mackerel, um, the presentation can sometimes, I uh, feel, have an effect. So, what I'd done to start with was I was fishing mackerel flappers. And the flappers I was using, I was uh, taking the fillets off to just down to the uh, dorsal fin. Now, when I was taking them off just down to there, then I'd break the spine and take the little section out the middle and I would use that to chum the water but that was attracting lots of dogfish as well as a few taupe it was attracting a lot of dogfish so then I went over to whole mackerel and after a while I started catching some dogfish which had swallowed whole mackerel in their entirety so again that wasn't keeping me away from them but towards the end of the session I'd actually changed my bait presentation to another style and what I would do is cut the mackerel diagonally in half, so I had two baits out of one fish. Now, I would cut from behind the petrol fin, down, all the way through the body cavity, and out the other side, and through the, uh, and through the spine, of course. Now, that meant that I had a tail section and a head section, but I did find that the head sections tended to pick up fish a lot better than the tail sections, possibly because the hook's going through the skull, and therefore it holds on to the hook a lot better. Having said that, the tail sections still picked me up some fish. Now these two bait presentations, uh, they worked very well for me, and um, coming up towards the end of the session, that was all I was using. And coming up over the rail now, here's another nice tape. Unfortunately, not uh, caught by me, but caught by the gentleman just fishing down to my right hand side. Now, this next fish was a little small tope again, and this one had taken half a mackerel. Like the baits I was talking about, uh, this is half a mackerel cut from the petrol fin, diagonally through his body, giving me just the head end. Now, this bait, um, although it was all the way down that inside that tope's mouth, I was being a bit lazy, and what I'd done was I just re-hooked it, pulled it out of the tope's mouth, chucked the tope back, and then dropped it back down. Now, in most circumstances, I tend to sort of frown on this sort of stuff and think it's quite lazy, but I'm glad I did it this time because that bait there is the bait that caught my all-time PB. So let's have a quick look at that.
So now the fish is on the boat, it's time for the all important weighing and measuring. Now, I don't know what the full measurements were um, because I was just really over, over the moon with catching that fish. But the way they're taken is the girth and the length, there's a weird equation that works out the actual size of that fish. And this guy came in at 27 pound nine ounces. So I was well chuffed. Unfortunately though, um, the audio on the bit of footage following with me holding the fish didn't come out very well. So this is me speaking over the top of it. But trust me, I am as pleased as pleased could be with that fish. That is my all fish PB. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to beat it someday. But for now, I'm chuffed to bits with it. So there you go, that's that little um, bite, pullback, and then strike into uh, in action there. And this fish uh, felt a lot bigger. Now, if you look at this uh, fish, how it's playing, it's running. I had to tighten that clutch up a couple of times just to slow the fish down because it was taking line pretty much freely. And unfortunately, as much as this fish was hooked, it couldn't have been hooked too well and uh, it shook his head and rattled that hook loose and I, this could be because I maybe had tightened up too much but then again it might have just been a weak hook hold I guess we'll never know I'm hoping it's a weak hook hold and not a mistake on my behalf Then right at the death, right on the last cast, I managed to pick up and pull into a different species of fish. And I was quite happy to see this one. Although it's not the biggest I've ever caught, um, this was a bullus. And that put me on the third species for this video. And that's the sixth species out on this boat trip for me this week.
Well there you have it, I had a great day out with the boys out on a blue mink today, um, had a nice fish, it was my all time PB, £27.9, so well happy with that, and um, I lost a few more, so hopefully next time I'll do a bit better. Now having said that, if you've liked this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down here, check out my latest fishing video over here, and my sea fishing play, I have a big fishing playlist up top.